fact, before been open, and he saw heaven open, this is John speaking, and behold, a white horse, mm -hmm. and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. So now he's seeing the Lord. Go ahead. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. Wait, wait, wait. So in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. That's the same. And give me that precept in Exodus 15, 3. Showing you it's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. So I say he ain't coming back to give out gummy bears and handshakes and kisses. That's going back. Revelation 19 again. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. Now, I told y'all, the same God you read about in the Old Testament is Christ, the Son of God. It's the same one. This is why, give me John 1 and 1, please. Y'all got to, let's get our thoughts right. Y'all thought you was dealing with the Father. You thought we went on a mountain and spoke to the Heavenly Father. No, the Father we spoke with was Christ. Read that. John chapter 1 and verse 1. Mm. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, mm. and the Word was God. And the Word was God. Go ahead. The same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning of Genesis with God. Go ahead. All things were made by Him. All things were made by Him. And without Him. And without Him. Was not anything made that was made. Go ahead. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. Mm -hmm. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Jump down to verse 14, I think. I'm not looking at it. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh. And the word was made flesh. Go ahead. And dwelt among us. And dwelt among us. Who is that, brothers? Christ. That's Christ. Okay. Like I keep saying, the father we dealt with was Christ. Give me, go back to, you forgot already. No, you forgot. Go back to Isaiah 9. I know you forgot already. Isaiah 9. I forgot the verse because I ain't looking at it. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. This is Christ. Go ahead. Unto us a son is given. Mm, the son. Go ahead. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father. The what? We see you going by it. That's the part we want. Read it again. The everlasting Father. One more time. The everlasting Father. One more time. The everlasting Father. Christ is the everlasting Father we dealt with. I'm telling you, he's the everlasting Father we dealt with. That's why we, we, we I just, I, I just got to show you now. Give me, give me real quick. I got to find it. Uh, uh, dad, go on. If somebody help me. Christ said, you have never seen the John, is it John 12? Where? John 57? 37, get that. John 5. John. John chapter 5 and verse, verse 37. Verse 37. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, have borne witness of me. Mm -hmm. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Christ said, you never seen the Father. You never dealt with the Father. To the, the only God you know, Israel, is me. Right. Y'all understand that? Wait, 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 wait. Revelation, is it 22 or 21? I want the part. 22-4? So look, three. Watch this. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 3. And there shall be no more curse. So in the kingdom, the curse of Deuteronomy 20 is going to be done, finished, over with. Go ahead. But the throne of God and of the Lamb. Notice it makes a distinction. The throne of God and of the Lamb. That's the Father and the Son. Go ahead. Shall be in it. Uh -huh. And his servants shall serve him. We are the servants that shall serve him. Now watch this. And they shall see his face. And they shall see his face. Face, because why? We never seen the Father before, but now Christ. I'm going to show it. <laughs> you <all right. clears throat> this man just gets worse and worse with it, man. I'm gonna start off first and foremost by giving all the praises, glory, and honor 
unto Yahweh Bashum Yahushai Bashum Rachak Wadash. Double unto the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto the four elect tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, one thing we do know is that the Lord is not the author of confusion. And uh, what he did with doctoring up this doctrine by putting these precepts that don't match together, he confused his congregation. And this was all by the cunning craftiness in the slate of Nate. This is wicked. Now, let me get this real quick. And this is for you brothers and you few sisters that are among us. This is Ephesians 4. I'll start at verse 11. The point is at verse 14. It says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And then you also, on the flip side, you got false prophets. You also got false pastors that's, that scatter the sheep of the Lord's uh, pasture. You got false teachers out there. And Nate happens to, to fit the criteria of a false teacher, a false prophet, a false pastor. Just on all the things that we catch him uh, going off on. All right. This guy's not getting any better. He's getting worse. So these videos are necessary. It says for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Most High, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lay in wait to deceive. And now uh, that's pretty much what Nate is doing uh, in, in to his congregation. He's deceiving them. All right. And if you're not of the elect and the Lord didn't open up your understanding, you will be had. You will be deceived. And the Lord said the deceived and the deceivers are his. The Lord can use false prophets to deceive those who are not of the elect. All right. Let me go from there to uh, 2 Corinthians. And it says, therefore, we have this. It's like a therefore seeing we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of the Most High deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the Most High. When we handle this word, we have to rightly, um, we have to rightly divide it by truth. All right. We have to rightly divide the word in truth. Like it tells us in uh, Timothy. When it says study to show thyself approved, right? It says Second Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved unto the most high. A workman that need him not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth all right directly and correctly are we supposed to speak sound doctrine nate is not a uh, teaching sound doctrine because now all of a sudden the son becomes the father all of a sudden where did that come from so we never dealt with the most high in the scriptures so we're going to act like Moses didn't actually stand before the presence of the father. 
<clears throat> Exodus 20, uh, it's like yeah, Exodus 33. And we're going to go all the way down. And I'm going to start at verse, um, I'm going to start at verse 17. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, shew me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. This is why Yahweh Shai said what he said. That no man have seen my father. You, nobody was able to see his face and live. Why? Because the Mosai is a spirit. He's a, he's a burning fire. All right. If you stand before him as a man, <laughs> you, you won't be here. All right. But this was a special occasion where the Lord allowed Moses to come into his presence because the Lord was dealing with Moses. He was like our first mediator. All right. It says, and the, and the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me and thou shalt stand upon a rock and it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by, meaning, you know, his brightness, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by and I will Take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. So the Lord actually uh, revealed himself here, but he just, his face couldn't be seen. He only can stand with his, with his back, you know, towards him. All right. So. <clears throat> This is, you know, once again, Nate speaking and, and you know, he with good words and, and a fair speech, deceiving the hearts of the simple like usual, them, them zombies that follow him. The simple believe of every word, but the prudent look well to his going. And he had the nerve to read Revelation 19 and 11, where it talks about Yahweh Shai being, you know, seen on a white horse. All right, which he's coming in a, a, a chariot. All right. And um, <clears throat> it said that he was coming to judge and make war. Then he cross-referenced it with uh, Exodus 15 and 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. How could you put Yahweh Shai in place of Yahweh? When simply, when, when, when that statement was made, this was actually during a song that we were singing in triumph when we were delivered out of Egypt. Exodus 15 and 1 is the song of Moses. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. All right, to, to the Lord. It says L-O-R-D in all caps. When you go into the Hebrew, what word is there? Is it, is it Yahweh Shai? No, it's Yahweh. The Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days. So that's who we were singing uh, to. All right, it says, And spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he have triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider have he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will pre prepare him an habitation. My father's God, and I will, I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. And this is regarding what the Lord did for us when we were in Egypt. When he brought us out of there with a, with a mighty deliverance. What he did to those Egyptians. What he did to Pharaoh and his armies. That's why they said the Lord is a man of war. But this scripture right here has nothing to do with Revelation 19. Just because it says that Yahweh Shai is coming to judge and make war. Okay. 
Do we know this is talking about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, not Yahweh Shai? So this guy's out of his, he's out of his head, man. That, that, hey, that, that, uh, that oil that you dreamed that you lost. I don't know. It just seemed to me like you're not going to get a drip back. Especially when you keep hardening in your neck while suddenly being reproved. I don't know if, if, if you're going to receive that oil back. I mean, the scriptures do say uh, 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 dreams lift up fools. You probably got deceived with that dream. Because that oil is, 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 is yo, <laughs> you're on fumes right now. We know Revelation 19 and 11 is talking about when Yahweh Shai comes to bring the judgment. And even um, in the book of John, it was already uh, said that the Lord was going to bring, he was going to set his judgment upon his son. John 5 and 22, for the father judgeth no man, but he hath committed all judgment unto the son, that all men should honor the son even as they honor the father. He that honor of not the son, honor of not the father, which he have sent him. All right, so Yahweh Shai is going to come back and he's going to do the judging on behalf of his father. Matter of fact, let me go here real quick. Let's go to the Old Testament. <clears throat> Psalm 72 and 1, it says, Give the king thy judgments, O power, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. The mountain shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. So that's what he's going to come to do. He's going to come to judge and make war. And that's how he's going to break in pieces the oppressor. Because he's going to judge uh, uh, the great whore, Babylon the Great. He's also going to judge, all right, the uh, the beast. He's going to give it to a burning flame. He's going to cast it into that fire. So, <clears throat> let's go from there because... He even brought out Isaiah 9 to 6 where it refers to our Lord as everlasting father. Well, let's get understanding on that. Isaiah 9 and 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and a government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So, and you heard, you know, he, he his voice got real loud. He got real animated, you know, real uh, dramatic when they, when, when they uh, said the everlasting father. I don't even think he understand what that actually mean. Why is Yahweh Shai, the son of the Most High, being called the everlasting father? Is that because he is the, the heavenly father? No. The, the Lord made the distinction himself that he and his father are one. He made the distinction when he made that statement. They're in unison, but there's a father and there's a son. They're not the same. Now, what did it mean by the everlasting father? Why is Yahweh Shai being referred to as an everlasting father? Because his first fruits which were chosen before the foundation of the world, they were here from the beginning. We know that Yahweh Shai was from everlasting to everlasting. And then you had those who came of him. His servants, his the, the, the prophets, his elect were always here, all right, before the world was. But Yahweh Shai was the first spirit. He was the chief. He was the beginning. All right. And then when you uh, let's go here real quick. Let's go to Psalms. The 22nd chapter. <clears throat> and we know this is referring to. Yahweh Shai. It was prophesying of Yahweh Shai. All right. There's a uh, Psalms 22. 
And um, this is how we know it's talking about Yahweh Shai. Psalms 22 and uh, 15, it says, My strength is dried up like a pot sheared, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. And this is referring to when Yahweh Shai was on the cross. Surrounded by all the wicked Jews that denied him, that said, let our blood be upon, uh, let his blood be upon us and our children. That was mocking him and telling him, if you be the son of God, come up off that cross, deliver yourself off the cross, right? You had them filthy ass Romans, that was right there. He says, I might tell my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them, they cast lots upon my vesture. That's what they did when he was on the cross. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength, haste thee to help me. All right, so he was praying and prophesying at the same time of, of, of uh, Yahweh Shai to the Father. All right, so this foreshadowed what would happen. So King David was a prophet. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. And did not Yahweh Shai declare the name of the Father to his, uh, his, his chosen? We'll get to that. It says, Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all ye seed of Israel. For ye have not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither have he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. Let me jump down. And it says here, verse 28, it says, For the kingdom of the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow down before him. And none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that have done this. Those that are who? Those that are born again. Because they were going to hear what? They were, they were going to hear the gospel. They were going to hear uh, 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 the gospel of, 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 of repentance, the gospel of grace. Or that we would be able to reconcile back to the Father. So that would make us, you know, new creatures. When we be re regenerated through the word. Because how are we begotten now? We're begotten through the word. Yahweh Shai being the word, of course. So ultimately, Yahweh Shai is, is, is spiritually, he's our, our everlasting father. So let's deal with that. It said a seed shall serve him. So let's get a couple of precepts on that. Because it also says in Isaiah 53 that he shall see his seed. And that was, refer that was talking about Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 53 and 10, it says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He have put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It's talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. So why does it say here, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed? Let's go to Psalms 89 real quick. This is uh, Psalms 89 and... All right, I'm going to start at verse uh, 24. It says, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with them. Now, let me, let me go up. Psalms 89 and 20 says, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. 
and I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with them, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my father, my power, and the rock of my salvation. Also I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. Who is who's the Lord's firstborn? Who is his first begotten? When we go to Psalms, the second chapter, the uh, uh, the seventh verse. Let's go there. Psalms 2 and verse 7, it says, I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. All right. So he's Yahweh Shah is the is the firstborn. Okay. It says, uh, My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed. Wait, so Yahweh Shah has a seed? It says, His seed also will I make to endure forever in his throne as the days of heaven. So we know this is talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai, right? Because he, he, he did cry to the Lord and say, Thou art my father. Let's go to the cross, uh, cross reference to show that. Is uh, Matthew several instances where he when he said, "Oh my Father, what the hell is Nate talking about, man?" Matthew twenty six thirty nine, and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, "Oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as Thou wilt." Uh, verse forty two. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, "Oh my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, Thy will be done." All right. Luke 23 and 46. And when Yahweh Shah had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. So the Lord constantly uh, called unto his father, which is the Most High Yahweh. Okay. He ascended to his father. He said, your father into, into my God and your God. Hebrews 1 and 5, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I be, begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. So this is how we know this is uh, in reference to Yahweh Shai. And this, and this is a cut to you Old Testament only uh, Israelites that don't believe that Yahweh was prophesied in the law and in the prophets. So going back, um, read it again. It says, he shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. Because he's what? He's the king of kings. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore. And my covenant shall stand fast with them. His seed also will I make to endure forever. So that's the seed that he's going to see. That's the seed that's going to serve him. His elect. Because Yahweh Shai, he's going to be sitting on a throne that's forever and ever. And guess what? His, his, his uh, elect, his first fruits... They also are going to rule. They're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. It says, if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep my keep not my commandments, 
Then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Going back to what it says in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. All right. So Yahweh Shai took responsibility like a father for his children when he uh, gave himself as that offering for the sins of Israel. Isaiah 53. And. Uh, yeah, Isaiah 53 and uh, eight, it says he was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. Was he stricken? See. And then when you go to second Samuel, of course. Uh, 2 Samuel 7 and um, starting at verse 11 and it says and as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies also the Lord tell of thee that he he will make thee in house and when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers I will set up a seed after thee which shall proceed out of thy bowels and I will establish his kingdom he shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. Which is why up when we, uh, us in Yahweh Shai, if we have faith in, 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 in walking him and believe on him, we receive this same mercy. That same mercy trickles down to us. Okay. It says, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. All right. So we know this was a uh, prophesying of Yahweh Shai. All right. That he would uh, get chastened. And that's what happened. He took those stripes for the nation of Israel. So. That seed that shall serve him is talking about his his elect. Now let's go to uh, John, where the Lord speak in a parable of himself, and he referred to himself as a as a as a corn of wheat. This is John twelve. I'm gonna start at twenty three. Says and Yahweh shall answer them, saying, the, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit so what does that mean Yahweh Shai he had to uh, die and be lifted up for the rest of us to come to life for us to be uh, gathered to him alright his death opened up so much it opened up those seals it reconciled us back to the Father. It made us uh, his servants. All right. It, it, it finalized um, the covenant that the Lord made with, uh, with his people. So it brought forth much fruit. The first fruits, right? He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. All right. So that's the seed that's going to serve him. All right. The, 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 the fruit, because fruit starts as a seed first, don't it? So that, that fruit is going to come from. That word being sown. Yahweh Shai being the word and that word being sown in, 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 that, in that, that, that soil. Being sown unto good ground that brought forth much fruit. And they was going to spring up and be servants of the Lord. So he pretty much, he, he, he fathered um, our faith. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He fathered, you know, this ministry. He fathered, um, if you want to if, if uh, say it, 
because uh, we know that Abraham, um, he was a father of, 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 of many nations, a father of a multitude. And he was like the, uh, the father of our faith. If you and Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai takes the place of uh, Abraham and you become Abraham's seed. Read in Galatians 3 and uh, 29. So this is how you can understand why he's called the everlasting father. Well, let's go from there. Let's go to Hebrews 2. This is Hebrews 2 and verse uh, 13. It says, and again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which the Most High have given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So notice how it says up here, he says that I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children, which the most I have given me, right? Because the, 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 the children that was given him, Yahweh Shai spoke of in, 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 in John the 17th chapter. First, let's get uh, John 10. And uh, 27, it says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give, un I give unto them everlasting life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father, which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. So he's saying that the father gave them. Who was the them? His children, his sons. All right. And let's go from there to John 17. And this is when he asked for the Heavenly Father to, you know, glorify him as he as he was himself before the foundation. All right. Um, basically, before the world was. You know, he, he 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 was with the father. Going back to John 1 and 1, it says, uh, John 17 and uh, 5, it says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Now, that's why it says in Sirach uh, 17 and uh, was it 10? And he let shall praise his holy name. Why? Because the name will be manifested to them, which Nate is trying to conceal. He doesn't want to give you the name because he sold out. He did this whole faulty, confused doctrine just to say we don't have the name of the father yet. But Yahweh Shai have yet to reveal it to us. So we never knew the father's name. So all those altars that our forefathers made. With the name of the father in it, who, who whose name was that? When Abraham made a, a altar to the Lord, when 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 uh, uh, Isaac, all right, when Jacob, when 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 Moses, when they all made uh, altars, you know, when when Gideon, what, what what name were they putting on those altars? If we if we never dealt with the father, if we never knew his name. This dude got a lot to answer for, man. It's not looking too good. But continuing on, it says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever has given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words that thou hast gave me, gavest me, and they have received them, and I have Known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. 
and all mine are thine and thine are mine and I am glorified in them. So you see that same dynamic. The elect is in Yahweh Shai as Yahweh Shai is in the Father. It's like that, that, that same relationship. So it's in retrospect, yet the, the most high, all right, is 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 Yahweh Shai's father. And we being under Yahweh Shai, like, you know, we're his sons. But we all are one together. It says, And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. All right. <clears throat> Let me get this real quick. Because how are we begotten? How are we uh, his sons? John, uh, it's like in James 1 and 18, it says, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. All right, let's go from there to um, 1 Corinthians 15. It is uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and uh, 22, it says, for, it, for as in Adam all die, even so in Hamashiach shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Yahweh Shai the first fruits, afterward they that are Yahweh Shai's at his coming. So there's a there's an order there. Right? Yahweh Shai being the first spirit, first chosen spirit, right? That was his the, the, the Heavenly Father's begotten son. And then after that, you had the rest of them, those who were chosen before the foundation of the world. All right. Afterward, they that are Yahweh Shai at his coming. Now you look up the word first fruits. And the Greek word is. Strong's G 536. Aparche. Aparche. And it says to offer firstlings or first fruits. To take away the first fruits of the productions of the earth which was offered to the Most High. The first portion of the dough from which sacred loaves were to be prepared. Hence term used of persons consecrated to the Most High for all time. Alright. So. Romans 11 uh, Romans uh, 11 and Yeah I'll just read the Read the point It says uh, Verse 15 it says For if the casting away of them Be the reconciling of the world That's talking about uh, Those of the circumcision That didn't believe They got casted away So that uh, The Israelite foreigners You know which was fruit that was going to be brought in. It says, What shall be the receiving of them but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Okay? So, <clears throat> I'm not going to go into this whole thing, but this is one of the precepts that, that came up. But, you can see how Yahweh Shai will be called an everlasting father. Oh, let me uh, get this in Revelation 14. Revelation 14. And one it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with them 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of the harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. And they weren't foolish, they were, they were wise. They had that oil in their lamps. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men. Being the first fruits unto the Mosai and to the Lamb. 
So these these elect men, they were the first fruits to the Most High and to the Lamb, which is why Yahweh Shai was saying, "But thou that has given me, for they are mine, and they that are mine are thine." All right. So yeah, Yahweh Shai could be called the everlasting Father. But he is not the heavenly father, man. He's not the most high, the heavenly father God we read in the Old Testament. It's like, you you really are like, hit, you, you're you reaching new heights of, 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 of wickedness, man. Of deceit, deception. And the Lord's going to deal with you, man. If you, you know, we tell us saying that we hope that you repent. Because you're only getting worse and worse, man. So, <clears throat> the, the, the the seed that shall serve him is talking about his elect, Israel. And that's going to be that, 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 um, that choices uh, grain, all right? Like when it says in Amos, the ninth chapter, how he's going to uh, sift Israel as, a, as corn is sifted in the sieve, and not the least grain shall fall upon it. That's the seed that Yahweh Shai is going to, you know, shake up. And they're going to be uh, remaining. They're going to be found faithful until the end. They're going to follow the Lamb whithersoever He goes, because they were chosen before the foundation of the world. So that's the understanding on that. And Lord willing, this was edifying. I'm going to give all praise to Yahweh Shai. Until the next one, Shalom.